Good afternoon. I want to tell you a story today about a young man named Nicholas Herman. Nicholas Herman was born in the early 1600s. He was born to peasant parents. And as a result of being in that kind of family, the only way to support himself in this case was to join the army. And so he joined the army at a very bad time because if you're familiar with your history, the early 1600s was known for the 30 years war where for three decades there was war all across the continent of uh, Western Europe. But Nicholas decided to join the army. It was the only way that he could be clothed and fed. And so he served for some years in the army. It was a, uh, not a good experience for him. He saw horrific things. He saw uh, the way people died and all, and all the atrocities of war. He himself was wounded. In fact, wounded so bad at one point that he ended up having to retire from the army. Uh, decided to try his, his hand at being a footman uh, for someone else, but that didn't really work for him. And so he decided that he was going to do something different because Nicholas was a spiritual guy. And he remembered during his time in the army having this experience where he was looking out over a battlefield and he saw a solitary tree. And that tree was dormant because it was winter. And it was like God was speaking to him saying that tree will eventually bloom and have leaves and so, Nicholas, this is just a time in your life where everything appears to be dormant, but is waiting to spring forth. And so he decided that the way this was going to happen was to join a monastery. And so Nicholas joined a group of, of monks uh, that were very poor. They didn't take a whole lot for themselves. And he joined them as their cook in the kitchen. He was actually a little worried that they would even accept him because he called himself an oaf, a, a big guy who broke things, who was clumsy. Uh, but they accepted him. And for the next three decades, he worked in the kitchen. And then in the years after that, as he began to get older in years, he worked fixing sandals and doing other menial jobs and doing what they did in those days, which was meeting with people who had needs and just living a very simple life. And we might know nothing about him, except he did something that began to get people's attention. And he wasn't just an ordinary monk. He lived with the kind of joy and confidence and an attitude that people began to notice. And more and more people began to notice. It was so unusual that a cardinal from that area in the greater church came to interview Nicholas. And he sat down with him for four different conversations where he asked him the secret of how he lived the way he lived and why he lived the way he did. He didn't do much with that information until Nicholas died, well into his 70s, almost 80 years old. And he died in relative obscurity. Nobody really knew about him or knew anything about him until he died, at which point the cardinal began to publish the things that he learned from those interviews with Nicholas. Now, you're probably not familiar with Nicholas, but you might know him by his other name, the name that he took when he became a monk, which was simply that he was called Brother Lawrence. And Brother Lawrence is ruminations in the interview he gave to that cardinal turned into a book called Practicing the Presence of God. And that little book, which is just a summation of the way that Brother Lawrence lived, has sold millions and millions of copies and encouraged people in their spiritual journey for over 300 years. And the bottom line of it all is held in the title of the book, Practicing the Presence of God. Uh, Brother Lawrence used to say, when people would ask him, he said, people are trying so hard to find the presence of God and they think they have to do certain things or they have to go to a cathedral. He says, but instead, this is what he said. He said, it's a lot quicker and easier to just do our common business wholly for the love of him. Why do I bring this up? We are almost at the end of August. We're going into the fall season and we're going to go through all those normal routines that we do in the fall. And whether it's with kids or teenagers or school or just the ongoing uptick of activity, and we will do the common things of life, of just going through life, of meeting with people, of working, of, of eating, of all the things that we do. And if we're not careful, time will slip by, and then it'll be Halloween, and then it'll be Thanksgiving, and then it'll be Christmas, and then it'll be 2022, and time will have just gone, gone by. But I wonder... That if we practice the presence of God, which as Brother Lawrence said, and it's called practice because it takes time, uh, of just seeing God, involving God in every activity, of taking time to think about who he is, 
what he's like and inviting him into those common activities. I wonder what would change. How would we be different? And who might we impact in a way that we had never thought, just like Brother Lawrence did all those years ago? May you have success this fall as you go about the mundane and common activities of life in practicing the presence of God. Till next time. See you then.